you know, as much as I look back on it and thought of it as this horrific thing, which I mean, it was certainly at the beginning. I mean, I detoxed from um, cold turkey from Oxycontin my first few weeks in jail. I was incredibly anxious, depressed. Like I was having all sorts of feelings mentally, emotionally, spiritually, as, as you can imagine. But it ended up forcing me to sit still and it ended up forcing me to reattach behavior to emotion. What I mean by that is before jail, every time I would get stressed, anxious, depressed, I would find some sort of outlet to ease that. It would be drugs. It would be creating drama to get attention. It would be me going to the strip clubs and spending a ton of money to, to get attention and validate myself. It would be you know me um, just trying to get people doing whatever I could to fit in, getting people to like me. I would do all these things. But in jail, there was nowhere to hide anymore. It was me versus me. And I was naked emotionally, mentally, and spiritually for the first time in my life. And I couldn't act out in the way that I was before because I would have either gotten beat up, thrown into solitary confinement, or potentially gotten uh, more time in jail. And what really changed it for me was fitness and exercising, which I never thought it would be the, the case because I hated exercise growing up. I mean, I was always the fat kid. And my soon-to-be cellmate, who looked like a more jacked version of Brad Pitt from Fight Club, was playing Scrabble at the Scrabble table. And he looked at me, and he could tell, because I'm like, I like to think of myself as a very confident, emotionally intelligent, assertive human now. But back then, total opposite. I was very soft-spoken. I slouched over when I talked. I didn't look people in the eye like I'm looking at you right now. And he just could tell I needed some help. He's like, hey, when you get through your detox, you're going to start working out with me. And I was like, there's no way. Like if I, at the time, I could have been a model for Pillsbury. Like there, was no t- there was no way I was going to work out with this guy that was super jacked. And he was like, all right, man, whatever. And then one day we were having a conversation in the jail cell. And this conversation changed my life. And it's really shaped how I deal with life now. Like any good coach would or somebody who's trying to help you make a change, he was asking me questions. Like, what got you into jail? Or why would you do drugs? And all these things. And I kept blaming my parents. I kept blaming the girls that rejected me in grade school. I kept blaming my unathletic talents. I I kept blaming kids. And he looked at me and he said, you know, quit being a victim. That's the PG version. He said, quit being a victim. And I looked at him and I was like, well, what do you mean? Because at the time I wanted him to pat me on the back and say, it's okay, Doug, like the world's against you. Like it's everybody else's fault. But he's like, dude, you're blaming everybody else for your problems, but yourself. He was like, there's plenty of people that went through the same thing that you did that aren't in jail. Right, Doug? And I'm like, yep. He's like, you have two choices. Be a man. Look yourself in the mirror and say, you got yourself here and it's up to you to change or go be a victim and go cry in the corner, say, woe is me, be pessimistic, blame people for your problems. He's like, most people will do that in their life. And I finally felt this sense of self-empowerment that I hadn't felt in a very long time because I had this guy who had no skin in the game as far as my life come to Mm. me, give me this tough love that I needed, really wanting to help me for no reason, even though, you know, for the days prior to that, I had essentially just said, dude, I don't want your help. And I remember getting down um, to do a push up like shortly after that, because I was like, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll work out with you. I'll do whatever you say. And got down to do a push up, couldn't do a push up for my knees, collapsed. And then I would get up and like try to take a break. I'd walk up and down the steps, couldn't could barely walk up and down the steps because I was also smoking a pack, a pack and a half of cigarettes a day. And with my, my cellmates motivation and encouragement, training me in there every single day during my sentence, I was able to do a set of 10 push-ups and run a mile by the time my jail sentence was over. And it completely transformed my life because it taught me the importance of self-discipline and getting comfortable being uncomfortable. And even though you don't feel like doing something, you still should show up for yourself anyway. It taught me the importance of delayed gratification and how to manage stress and anxiety in a way that's healthy. And it just completely transformed me from the inside and out. And I started to walk with a different swagger. He taught, he taught me how to have better posture. And he's like, Doug, like if people are going to take you seriously in life, you got to learn to walk with your shoulders back, eye forward, eyes forward. He's like, you got to stop talking down to yourself. Like all these things that were so valuable to me to learn during a time of adversity. Like I wasn't in on the beach in California learning this stuff. I was in a jail cell where I was forced to deal with life in that way. And when I got out, um, he gave me a workout plan that I still have framed my place today. So I never forget where I came from and then left jail. And um, that's what really 
sparked the transformation. 